Welcome everyone. Today we're going to do a intro to the Spectrum Lab. Um, we'll go over a bunch of the different areas, kind of look at some of the tools. This is not going to be a tool training or anything, but part of the, we want to know like kind of what all we have, what abilities do we have, um, that type of thing. Um, so the main area that we call the lab are two rooms inside of State Straight Jesuits uh, A G Hall, rooms 3103 and 3105. Um, there is a full photo gallery, so this whole presentation will be linked. It has some of the images and stuff too, so you can look at specifically. There's a photo gallery I took partly today, and that's some from the past as well. Um, there's a bunch of the photos. But most of the tour today I'm going to do through uh, my phone camera. So we're going to go out and look around. Um, if for some reason the audio messes up, please let me know. I'm on a wireless headset, but it should work. Um, all right, so yeah, so these are the two rooms. 3105 is our computer lab, which is locked, which I didn't think about, so I'm going to unlock the outside door. Um, give me a second. There are multiple doors in. All right, so now we're a little bit better. So 3105 is our computer lab. It's set up for social distancing for computer science classes right now. So this is used as a classroom, so we don't have all the space as ours, but we do every day after school. No one else uses it, so it is ours. Um, all of these computers have SolidWorks installed on them, so we do CAD on them. They do not have any of the programming software installed, so we don't do any of the programming software. We just use them for CAD and for um, Google Drive and all of that stuff that we do. Back here is our 3D printing setup. So right now there are only three. There are normally five, four, um, there'll probably be more as we go on. We'll probably add some underneath, most likely. Um, these are all VEX IQ kits that we also share with the computer science department. Um, but we do have some, um, they're smaller robots that we use for camps and courses a lot um, and for some training activities. Um, right now we have some of our robots stored in here. That's our 2014 robot. So that's one of the older ones. That's the competition 2019, nope, that's the, yeah, that's the competition 2019 robot there. That's the practice 2020 robot. Um, and then moving forward, we have what's specifically called the engineering meeting room, but is actually our kitchen area, snack area, and AV area. Um, so this has all of our AV equipment that we use for live streaming robot events. When we, when we go to competitions, um, a lot of the off seasons, we'll be in charge of the audio and visual. Um, so we have cameras to do the web streaming. We have all the speakers to do the sound in the venue. We have a projector and projection screen um, and all the wiring and cabling involved for all of that. Um, there's also like tripods in here, coffee makers, some of the amount of snacks that are still left over, a bunch of like cups and stuff and storage. Um, all of that kind of gets put in here. Um, Spectrum themed uh, cornhole set over on the right. <laughs> uh, there's also bookshelves and metals and stuff in here as well. Um, okay, coming, we're gonna start with this one from the front. This is our main lab area. So this is 3103, which is the machine shop, um, assembly room, kind of where all the tools are, all of that stuff. Um, so a few of the things we have kind of mostly stored and they get pulled out when we need to use them. So that's the table saw, which is mostly for woodworking. It does not get used too often. It gets used mostly when we are doing um, the field build. So we'll build a bunch of the field elements. That's the main time the table saw gets pulled out. Um, similarly, when we're cutting, doing a lot of the woodwork, we have a miter saw for that. Um, so again, it's not really used all that much for the actual robot construction, but it does get used. Um, and kind of look around. This is all of the tool area. We'll go through 
kind of what some of those tools are and things in a second. I'm just going to give you an overview. There's a lot of storage areas. There's a lot of organization. A lot of it needs to get updated and redone a little bit, um, but it's mostly clean. There's a ton of storage up top as well. A bunch of old robot frames. Some of them not ours. <laughs> Several of them 148s. Um, but that's a whole different story. Um, okay, so that's kind of the big area. And we're just gonna go through the areas and then I'll go back to all the tools. A lot more storage and organization that we'll talk about um, in a second. We do have two closets. So we have basically the robot closet, the robot storage closet, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so this holds all of our bumper sets. So we have a lot of bumper sets for past robots that sometimes get taken apart eventually. A lot of times they just get stored and left because we use them for practice, we use them for all sorts of stuff. Um, a bunch of the old robots are in here in various shapes and put togetherness um, and a bunch of robot parts. All of our batteries and battery storage is mostly on this shelf. Um, there's also a bunch of like old game pieces from different, from various games, some other organization, some like bulk bolts and fasteners, some more long materials and things get stored in here. A lot of this needs to be cleaned up and organized. Um, so as we start thinking of how to do that more, that'd be a good thing. Um, some more material storage. So this is all um, plastic that we use to make the robot parts. So there's a lot of plastic in here. There's a lot of wood, mostly for field elements, but also for like prototyping or anytime we need to do something quick out of wood, we have a bunch of scrap wood or just wood that's been left over from other projects. Um, and then a bunch of other robot parts and things are in here too. So there's whole bins of like rubber, there's bins of um, control system parts, rollers, I think there's a tape bin. These are a bunch of the pneumatics parts that help with doing um, the air powered things on the robot. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. It does need to get cleaned up and organized a little bit. Um, we moved a lot of things in here to keep the main area clean for tours right now when we're not in here every day, um, where there still have some amount of people coming through, we can make it look a little nicer. Um, more organization happens in here. There's also a very large TV. So when we're in here, we can have um, mostly robot matches on there. I think there's a Chromecast hooked up to it so we can put robot matches and things if we're in here working. Um, what else? All of these are kind of the main work tables, assembly tables for when we're doing stuff. They're normally have way more stuff on them, <laughs> but night, actually right now it's relatively clean, which is super nice. Um, and we need to do better about keeping them clean. And then the other closet, which is kind of our more deep storage closet is a very big mess right now. Um, so forgive us for that. But this is where all of the apparel is stored. So this is all of the t-shirts and hats and hoodies, um, polos and button down shirts, all that are in these bins. Um, there's a bunch of event storage. So anything we need for um, TRI or our banquet or any of that gets stored in here. Um, there's several other things in here that need to get removed probably and find a new home, either get more organized or just no longer be stored in here. Um, that flammables cabinet over on the right is where we have um, paint, um, grease, oils, anything like that gets stored in there. Um, and there's some other deep wood storage stuff that we don't use very often gets stored kind of in the back corners. But yeah, this is one of the rooms that definitely has to get cleaned up more um, as we're going through stuff. Um, that cabinet right there with the off switch is our new powder coating oven um, that I worked on right as it back in March. So it hasn't actually powder coated anything yet, but it should start working at some point. Um, this is the rear door. So this is the normal in and out point for the team. So this goes outside. So we have our own in and out. This also leads to a very bright spot, but you can kind of see these two big blue things. One of them is a very big vacuum that does our dust collection. So it sucks up from a lot of the tools. And the other one is our air compressor. So we can run air tools and have air all the time as well. Okay. Um, 
coming forward in the actual lab part. Over here, we have sink and normally first aid, but I haven't been in here in a while, and for some reason our first aid kit is no longer on the wall, so we'll figure that out before we actually start doing work in here. But cleanup spill kit is there. Um, sink with eye wash station. Um, we also clean paint brushes and all that stuff happens there. Um, this is our powder coating setup, or at least was our powder coating setup. We now have a much bigger oven as well. So this lets us make our metal parts white, but they let us do it. It's much stronger than spray paint, and it's actually faster too because it uses the oven to cure the powder to the metal. Um, so we can get a new part ready, clean it, spray it with powder, and bake it, and basically have it ready to go on the robot in an hour, hour and a half. It's much faster than if we have to let spray paint dry. Um, we have some more storage shelves that need to get more organized. There's some VEX parts up there, some of the older ones, some other long-term storage stuff. It's where we store our laptops, which is how we do most of our um, team programming stuff. So if we do, if students don't have their own laptop they can use, we do have team laptops that have the programming software installed on them. And that's where we normally do um, kind of the main programming gets done on some of those. Um, this used to be 3D printer area and still has one of the 3D printers over here. Some of this stuff is gonna get pulled out and moved over to the other room. Um, we just didn't get to do that this year. And this computer, which the desktop's up there and the monitor's here, was what we were using to run the CNC tools. So this, this tool right here is called a CNC router. So it is able to cut out shapes out of metal, wood, plastic, whatever we want. Um, we, are getting, we have a new one coming in. I think it's getting delivered tomorrow actually. So this will go away at some point and the new one will be here in its place. That one will also get a replacement computer. So all of this kind of corner is gonna change a bit before we actually start using it again. Um, next to it is the laser cutter. So this guy is able to cut um, plastic and wood using the uh, using a laser that's generated from a big tube that's stored in the back back here. There's a big glass tube that's stored in the back, and it produces a laser that's able to cut out um, whatever shapes we want from plastic and wood very very quickly um, and easily for us. This is. We've had this for a little over two years now, um, and it's been working very well. The little box down there is the cooler for it. So that has to keep the um, laser cold. So if that's running, everything's running nice. If it starts beeping or something, it's very important that you come tell me so that we can make sure what's happening and not break our laser. Um, that'd be bad. What else do we have? Um, we have a mill that we've had since we moved into this building in the fall of 2013. No, sorry, the fall of 2014. Um, so we moved into, yes, yeah, so we've been in this lab for a little over six years now, or about to be six years. Um, and we've had this for a while. It does not actually get that much use. It's not the most useful tool in the lab, but it is handy on occasion where we need to use it. We'll talk about like kind of what all the tools do specifically later on, um, but it's definitely not the most used tool. Drill press lets us drill holes in things. It's one of our two drill presses, so that's one. And then we have a smaller one back over here that does the, basically the same thing. Um, what else? Band saws, we have a few different band saws, so they're able to cut um, different materials and they have basically a big looping blade that spins up and is able to cut the different materials. Um, so that's one of our bandsaws. This is a second bandsaw. So those are both called vertical bandsaws because the blade runs vertically up and down. Um, and then we have a third bandsaw which is a horizontal bandsaw. So it runs the other way. So its blade is here. And this lets us cut much longer, bigger pieces of material um, that we wouldn't be able to do on the vertical bandsaws. 
So if we have a really long piece of metal or something, we'll use this to cut a, a nice straight cut on it. Um, and it actually does the cutting kind of by itself. It'll lower, it'll lower itself down. Um, so it'll lower itself down and do the cutting for you basically, which is nice. Um, and we can get really straight cuts that way. Um, let's see. What else? So this is our shear. So this big thing right here basically can cut through um, plastic and metal really quickly, which is very handy. And it doesn't need power at all. It just has this big handle and you pull it back and it comes down and it'll just cut a very nice straight cut right through thin metal and most plastic, um, any like sheet of something, which is very convenient. A couple other things, grinders and sanders to make things smooth, depending on what they are. The grinders for like steel um, and the sander is for anything else. Um, this is our arbor press. We'll talk about more about what that is, but basically this just pushes on things very hard. Um, so it has this like handle and has this big handle right here. And if you need to just, if you really need to shove something into something else, um, that is what this tool is for. Um, and it comes in very, very handy. And we actually use that probably more than we use most of the other things on this table. Um, then we come up to the lathe. The lathe is a interesting tool. It's not something that most people have in their garage or anything for the most part. But largely what it does is it is designed to, um, it works somewhat backwards from a lot of the other tools. Most tools that you have, you have like a saw blade or a drill bit or something and you're moving the tool and that's how it does the cutting. The lathe works by actually moving the part. So whatever you want to um, machine, whatever you want to remove material from, gets clamped in this big clamp right here. So you'd put something like a shaft or a tube inside of there and you clamp it down. And then we have little sharp, um, we have little sharp cutters like this, that'll stay stationary. Hold on. Okay, doing all this one handed is tricky. And so this will get clamped here and this will stay this won't move at all. And then as the part rotates, when you turn the machine on, it'll spin whatever that shaft is forever. You move this into it and you can cut it um, and you can make things very round. You can make things smaller. And it's a very precise tool and it helps us out a lot when we're building the robot. Um, okay, what else? Um, all of this is storage and a little messy, but it's where we store most of our clamps so we can make sure stuff is not moving when we work on it. And then this large thing right here is our sheet metal break. So this lets us bend stuff. Um, so we basically put something under that little gap, clamp it down, and then we move this whole thing up and it lets us make things into different angles. Um, which is very convenient. And then a lot more storage. So this little thing stores a lot of long stuff, wood, a lot of scrap. Um, so we just keep it all off the floor and semi-organized. Um, let's see, more storage on this side. A lot of the drawers and things have various um, things being stored in them, sandpaper, that sort of thing. Um, what have we missed? Ooh, two of the important things. So this is, we can do it this way. This is sort of the main toolbox. So for any hand tool type thing, largely everything is in here. Most of the drawers are labeled relatively well. So if we need screwdrivers, we have screwdrivers. If we need, um, measuring stuff. There are tape measures, triangles, squares, all of that kind of thing. Um, pliers, most anything you would need in the normal toolbox in here. So these are all the tools that 
largely stay in the lab. So these don't go to events with us. Um, some of the other lubricants and stuff stay there that aren't in the flambles cabinet. Um, this one is just kind of overflow. We didn't actually buy this. This was from somehow else already in the school. Um, so it just ends up being overflow stuff and other random storage. This may change at some point. Um, this is all of the hand power drills and some of the saws and things. So it has batteries down in there as well and hand drills. So these get used a lot and these go to events with us. So these get packed up into little portable bins so we can take them to events. And then these two stacks right here are also portable toolboxes and they're called the T stacks. Um, so this one is all robot parts. So the way we set it up is um, this stack should have all the parts for the robot for our current season. So if we go to an event or if we go practice somewhere and we know we may need a spare or replacement part, these various bins have a lot of the parts already ready to go um, and set up for whatever robot we're working on. This one's not as organized as it probably should be because we only had one event last year. So it normally gets organized as we go through the season, uh, but it had most of what we needed in it. And then this one is the toolbox that we use at events. So this has a lot of other stuff in it zip ties, knives, wrenches, um, anything like that that we would need at an event and it's all portable and can come with us. Um, let's see, there's tape measures, spare ethernet cables. Yeah, just lots of stuff that we may or may not need um, that goes with us at events whenever we can. Um, okay. Then a bunch more organized stuff. So this is this is one of the main organization systems we use for our most like useful stuff. So if we have um, bolts that we need, they come out and are pulled out into these different trays. So you can just pull them out and then they open up and they have all of the bolts and nuts you need. Um, so that's mostly how our main fasteners all get used and various ones of these that are all labeled. Um, there are um, other parts for like the robot that are very specific that get put in different ones. So like this one is called half inch stuff. And there's a bunch of things on the robot that are all kind of rotary parts um, and things that move around. And that's what all this stuff is for. Um, and it all gets put together. So we kind of know exactly where it is and kind of know where to put it if we find it. Um, and can find it when we need it, hopefully. Um, same with some of the other ones. There's some electronic ones um, that have like sensors in them. Um, some of the other connectors and things we use in electronics have their own little bins, but all of those get sorted here um, and preferably labeled as nicely as possible so that we can find them quickly and easily. And then those are also designed to be portable. So we'll take those to events with us. Anything in these bins or trays are not designed to be portable. So this is all stuff that's supposed to just basically stay in the lab. Um, a lot of it is spare stuff, um, some amount of scrap stuff from past robots. We have like a bunch of random metal gussets and things in here. Um, all of the tape or a lot of the tape lives in these trays. Um, a lot of the other fasteners that we'll have. So each one of these has basically like the size of a bolt labeled on them. That's what all these numbers are. Um, so they have various bolts and nuts and anything else we need to be able to connect things together with. Um, some of the other ones are kind of just random and not as organized as they should be that we kind of need to work on. Um, some of them make sense, some of them don't. We've had this for a while, so it's slowly getting disorganized and some at some point we need to come back through and actually clean it all up, which we'll do at some point in the future, who knows when. Um, what else? I think that's the vast majority of it. This ends up being just the random corner of stuff that doesn't have a home. Um, we probably need to clean that up a little bit more too. Um, oh, earlier we talked about the vacuum and compressor, but we didn't see the inside. So that big pipe up there is the vacuum or dust collector. 
And so that sucks air and dust out. The smaller pipe is compressed air coming in. So they both lead over into both of these walls. So any of these bigger pipes coming down are pipes where you can connect the vacuum to. And then any of the smaller pipes are pipes for the uh, compressed air. So you can have compressed air runs throughout the room as well. Um, and then we have power from the ceiling um, for most of the room as well as some outlets around the room as well. Okay. Um, questions, things people want to see? Any other? Yes, sort of. Um, so you showed us the 3D printers. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you use computers to, uh, you know, answer what needs to be printed. So which compute do you like? Do you use those computers in there to 3D print? Oh, I got you. Um, so our normal setup is that you can design the file on whatever computer you have that has SolidWorks, right? So all of these have Solid or whatever CAD program you want to use, either SolidWorks or Onshape now, that we're going to do a lot more Onshape. Um, so you could do it at home and you could design it or you could do it here. And once you get the comp file, this laptop is set up to do um, the final like configuration, basically. Um, it has the program on it that has all the settings for the different uh, 3D printers. And so it'll make either, it'll make the file that you either put on a um, thumb drive or SD card, depending on which printer it is and which one it takes. And then after you do that, you put it in the printer and uh, start it from the actual printer itself. Okay, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, they're all, the fact that we don't have all the same printer makes it a little annoying. So there's a few that make, that are more commonly used by people because it's easier to train on. Um, there are a few that are a little bit more annoying that only get used by a couple people because you have to like learn how to do it. Um, but we're going to work on that and make that easier, hopefully. Um, so if the, if the programming isn't done on those computers, where is it done from? Oh yeah. So most of the time it ends up being done on people's individual laptops. Um, but we do have team laptops as well that have it on there. Um, so like they'll get stored up here and they have a little charging thing that we built with the laser cutter. Um, so this was all just plywood and we designed and built this. Um, so then it has all of the laptop chargers and laptops. So almost all of these have the programming software on them. Um, but most of these, and whoever is doing the large amount of the programming normally has a computer. Um, if not, they can use Wait. those though. So are these 3D models programmed or, I, or are they kind of like what we did on the last assignment where you designed them with that weird 3D modeling thing? For the 3D printer? Yes. Yeah, you, you CAD them with Onshape. Yeah, so you- Okay. Yeah, so you, you, once you do the CAD, you get, um, you are able to save that to a specific file cor format. Um, normally it's called STL. Um, and that format can be read by the software that's on this laptop and converts it to the program that the 3D printers need, basically is how it works. Cool. Um, it is not a hard process. It's pretty fast. Um, and that we'll have a whole day on how the 3D printing stuff works coming up in a few weeks. I don't know exactly when, but that's on the list. Do we need a laptop or a desktop to do the on shape? Because I can't seem to do it on my iPad. Um, you can do some of it on the iPad, but it is definitely easier to do on an actual computer. Um, most of the robot stuff is easier to do on a laptop or desktop. What time is the lab open? Like, when does it, when can you first get into the lab? You can't right now. So eventually yeah. we'll figure that out. But at the moment it is closed. Uh, we are all virtual. Um, this is the first time I've been up here basically to do this and I've this in weeks um, and we'll still be closed for a while just cause it doesn't, there's, it's way too hard to distance. If we have 20 plus people in here, we're all touching all the same things. Um, it just doesn't really work. So eventually we will. I don't know when that time will be.
Um, other questions?